Hi, my name is Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. This video is about the two most important laboratory tests you can get done related to chronic disease. So the first one is for the heart, and then the second one is for uh, diabetes and the metabolism going on inside your body, including inflammation. So this is called the coronary artery calcium score. It's uh, done in a CT machine. You've probably heard of like a CAT scan. And it's uh, only a couple minutes, you, you know, you lay in your back, they put you in the machine, they bring you out, and it's $100. So it's really inexpensive. And uh, you may be able to go to um, <clears throat> an imaging center and say, hey, I'm going to pay you cash and uh, maybe get the test without having a prescription from a medical doctor. Um, but that's up to the imaging center. Okay, now the score on this should be zero. And, um, and as your score gets higher over time, you know, 100 or 600, the uh, risk, uh, I'm sorry, it's not a risk. This is not a risk assessment, like being overweight or LDL or exercise level. This is the test for heart disease. This is the scan that sees how, um, how much calcium is in your arteries. So... Um, as your score goes up, then your chances of a heart attack go up, and it's all measured out exactly. Okay, so if you're at 600, your chance of having a heart attack in the next five years is like 37%. Okay, if you're at zero, your chance of having a heart attack for the next 15 years is 0%. Okay, it's a very, like, engineer way to think. There's no guessing about this. This is the test to see whether or not you're going to have a heart attack in the next 5 to 15 years and what your, what your chances are. Okay, um, so if you have an artery, this is the inside of the artery, and you get a placking buildup, this could be a soft plaque, LDL, cholesterol, and white blood cells, and pus, and maybe a virus or two in there, and it keeps building up. Okay, this can be dissolved in a matter of six months, and I've helped a lot of people get rid of that um, there's supplements that were invented in the 1930s through the 50s, plus ketosis for your diet. Extremely important. Okay, now what calcium is, it's a buildup of calcium, this calcium score, it's a buildup of calcium in the arterial wall like that. And let me, let me say it this way. Um, I had a patient once who had a small case of tuberculosis, in her lungs and the body killed it and then it walled it off in a ball of calcium and that tuberculosis bug was was dead on the inside so from now on for the rest of her life when she gets an x-ray that calcium ball will be found in her lungs okay so so putting when the body puts calcium into tissue it's the last step in healing so when you have a problem the body has has two opportunities. The first opportunity is to return that tissue back to normal. And if that doesn't work, it'll turn that tissue into calcium. So let me give you another example. An alcoholic with a bad liver, let's say they drink a fifth of whiskey a day for 10 years, um, the, the body does not have any opportunity to return the liver cells back into liver cells. You know, the diseased liver cells can't get turned back into regular normal liver cells because of the continual assault on the liver from the alcohol. So what it does is it makes the liver calcified and you can feel it. And uh, one time in the clinic when I was in school, I uh, did a rotation at the Salvation Army in downtown Chicago and there was a guy that did a fifth of whiskey a day for 10 years and his liver was like, it was as hard as that. And I could feel it with my fingers. Okay, so the point is, calcium was the last step that his body had to take to try to secure that pathological tissue. One last analogy, you break your bone, what happens? Your body puts calcium there. So your body has been assaulted by too many carbohydrates, too much sugar, too much pop for a long period of time, and, and, this is, and your arteries are diseased. And so you're going to have um, collections of calcium throughout your heart, throughout your chest. And this is the most important place because the heart is continuously beating. It never takes a break. So this is why the calcium 
will end up here and not somewhere else in your leg, for example, like uh, for the average person. Okay, there are people that get calcifications throughout their body, but this is obviously the most the place where it happens first. Okay, so the coronary artery calcium scan is measuring the amount of calcium in your arteries from a you know a long time from decades of eating bad food. Now, like I just want to repeat. There's this calcium embedded in the arterial wall, and then there's placking. Um, the medical community always talks about the placking, and they don't really talk about the coronary artery calcium score because it's so cheap, it's only $100. If you don't get this done, they recommend you do a catheterization, which means they put a scope up through your leg. You can't see me do this, but from my leg into the heart. It's called a cath, and you lay on the table, and it costs $9,000. So they don't tell you about this because they'd rather make $9,000 than making $100. Now, I know a guy that died on the table while he was being cathed. And what they do is they got that scope in your heart, they start pumping dye, and they're looking to see how much blood flow you have going on. All right, so this is a supply and demand issue. There's plenty of supply. For these CT scans, you know, for this um, calcium score, but you have to create the demand. You have to ask your doctor, I want a calcium score. Male, female, doesn't matter. If you're 50 years old, get one now, spend the money, and then do it again in five years. And hopefully it's a zero both times. If it's 400 at the age of 50, you got to work at bringing it down. And then in five years, hopefully you got it down to 300. Now, um, I have a patient that, over the course of 13 months, he brought his score down 10%. It went from 320-something to 298. Now, and that's fantastic. And it, but it took 13 months. And um, this is something that not many people know how to reverse. Um, you can find stuff online, and I'm going to go through some supplements, actually right now, that I recommend to uh, fix this up. Okay, now... These first ones are from Standard Process, one of my favorite supplement companies. And one is called Fast Food. This is, this is uh, phosphorus. And when you consume enough phosphorus, it pushes calcium out of the body. What calcium leaves the body first? It's the calcium that's in the soft tissues that's no, not supposed to be there. This is the same fantastic supplement that gets rid of bone spurs, kidney stones, and gallstones. Okay. And then, um, but if you have osteoporosis, you don't want to necessarily take this uh, for a long period of time. You can take it for a short period of time. Now, this is similar to this protocol I just gave not too long ago regarding uh, kidney stones. KLM was a salt that's essential for um, straightening out the body's movement of calcium and other minerals around the body. And then another one is called Cataplex, Cataplex F Pearls. Okay, now they also sell a product called Cataplex F Tablets. That's a dry pill. The pearls is actually, um, a, it's a pearl. It's a little thing with oil inside of it. Okay, I gotta switch markers. And then you wanna take vitamin K2 and D3. And we actually have a supplement called K2 D3. So those go together, these, um, um, help with cal calcium mobilization um, around the body. Okay, and then another very important thing to do is enzymes. And we have a product called Vascuzyme, which I'm really happy about, designed to clean up arteries. And you take them on an empty stomach. Okay, and um, so now I'm always a fan of Ceruta to heal the arterial tissue. All right, so this is the basic protocol supplement-wise to get the calcium out of your ar arterial walls. And then the diet absolutely has to be ketosis. If you're not in ketosis, forget it. Okay, because um, if you're eating sugar and bread and you have too much sugar in your blood relative to fat, you're getting calcium deposits throughout your whole body. I'm sorry. You're getting... Um, metabolic mayhem throughout your whole body, 
which leads to calcium deposits, which leads to fatty deposition, not just in your arteries, but in your liver, in your pancreas, in your abdomen. So ketosis reverses that so that the, the sugar goes down and then the fat in your blood goes up. And you're a human being, your body needs to be burning fat. Your blood needs to look like this, more fat than sugar. Okay, so I'm done talking about coronary artery calcium score. The next thing to talk about is called postprandial insulin. Postprandial means after you eat. So you may have heard about this kind of testing for sugar in your blood. You go to the lab, you drink a bunch of sugar, they take your blood before and after that, and then an hour later, and then an hour after that, and then an hour after that. And then they do um, a graph where your blood sugar is here before you drink that sugar, and then it goes up, and then it goes down, and they test it here and here and here, like that. So postprandial. So, so when, I, when I drew this, I'm talking about sugar in the blood, and then with the standard American diet, our blood sugar goes up and down and up and down like this. And that's very dangerous. And um, let's compare that to insulin. If this continues for a long time, like decades, the insulin, which should be going like this, ends up going like this. Okay, so the insulin now is too high and it stays too high because it's waiting for you to consume the next um, cookie. And that's very, very dangerous. All right, so the postprandial insulin test measures what happens with your insulin. It should go down like that. But if it goes up and then it goes like this in the same time period, like two hours or four hours, you can then predict um, chronic diseases, including cancer and heart disease and, and um, chronic diseases. So you want your insulin to, to stay low now the ketogenic diet is um, actually a low insulin diet. And that's the most important thing about ketosis. And any steps that you take for your health is to keep the insulin down. So when you keep the insulin down, that's the main marker for whether or not you're gonna have some chronic disease, you know, in five or 30 years. Now these are the two tests. Those are the most important tests. The calcium score of the arteries, and the postprandial insulin test. So get those run and let me know what the numbers are.